Eliana, um, I know your background is heavily in, in the biosphere. Um, how does that, obviously that's typically a, a quite slow growth industry or but very high level of investment there. Um, how would someone looking at um, approaching Southern Angels um, from an ag tech background, how would you look, assess them compared to someone that had a, a med tech company? Um, for example, does, does your level of experience um, in your own realm play um, a significant factor in, in whether you can establish that investor founder relationship? Um, only to some extent. I mean, I think that um, angels apply the same principles across the different fields. We probably don't invest that much in uh, what's the classic uh, biomed stuff of drug development because it does require such large chunks of funding. And you know those damn venture capitalists are gonna come afterwards and screw you uh, with, with, with preference, preference shares, uh, uh, veto rights, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, which actually is interesting because uh, in that context, because uh, we should know the, the views of startups because venture capitalists do come along with a very set, it's a, it's a, it's a script of we take, we need preference shares, we will have veto rights, ABC, we will have two board members, blah, 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 blah. Um, but there is actually a lot of flexibility in the system, is my feedback I would give. And don't take that for granted that that's what they're going to take. So as an angel investor, I prefer a bit more flexibility. Mm. Um, and, uh, and I think, yeah, angels um, uh, come in, they're investing their own money. You know, th this is your retirement funds that you're investing. A big difference from a venture capital uh, organisation that's investing other people's money. Now, hopefully the drivers are still the same, but um, it's quite a different personal investment in what you're doing. I don't think it matters so much across the, the, the sectors. You tend to want to invest in sectors, I think any investor wants to invest in sectors that you understand. I don't understand the IT sector. Um, whereas people who are, who are not in that sector would say, I don't understand this bio sector at all. Mm. And so you can, you can basically make the wrong decisions because you can't interpret the key drivers. Mm. So, but, you know, our angel group has a expertise across a range of domains. And the beauty of it is you get together in a group and the one who's the expert says, you know, I'm saying this and whatever. And we tend to go along with that because mm. you trust the people. Mm. Um, at the end of the day, it's a people thing. I think we said this in the last panel that... Uh, who you know, uh, how you get to know people and the trust in the people and their capabilities, it has to be the most crucial thing because probably, I don't know, of the companies in this room who started out with an idea, how many are on exactly that same track now or have changed directions as a company? Many, how many are not on the same track as you absolutely started a company? Hands up. Yeah. Stand up. No, yeah. So what you do, and that happened, that, that happened with me with a company I founded, TGR Biosciences, which started out developing a therapeutic, uh, had a terrible clinical trial, and, you know, that was the end of that. Mm. Uh, we ended up being a successful company. It's been sold now to a UK uh, major um, uh, company in, because we're in the area of assay kit development for the, for the bioscience area. Mm. Uh, profitable biotech company, which is a bit of an oxymoron, I think, but that's the way it was. Uh, and doing well. So you change direction. So at the end of the day, it's the people and the quality of the people and mm -hmm. what they bring and how, how, how do they think outside the square? Are they willing to accept advice? Because angels like to give um, help. You know, you're doing it. There's a, there's a, the, the different, it's the same thing with venture capital really, but, it's a, but the spectrum from being philanthropic through to hard-nosed investor is a different positioning in there. And the, and the angel investors are more about saying, can I help this company? And I'll, maybe I'll make some money at the end of the day, but you know, I don't necessarily care that much. I wanna help companies. So there's a lot of help that goes into saying to companies who come to us. As I said, we, as Joshua said, we're 100 companies over the last year. Uh, we've invested in seven. I hope a lot of those companies have gone away and said, well, I didn't get investment, but gee, I got some advice on that uh, from people who know. So. That's the difference though. Yeah. Now I know we have a number of budding uh, finance students here, Andy out the back. Um, back in the day, we built the website for the Adelaide Uni Finance Society. <laughs> um, 
Talk me through, David, the pathway to VC. Um, I believe your background was in economics initially. Um, as a job. As a, yeah, as in what you studied. Um, how did you get into venture, the path of venture capital? I, I can share my journey. Um, it's not an enormous industry, so there's not sort of a rigorous established pipeline. But um, what worked for me was I had studied both, both engineering and finance. And my job, my first job as an analyst at a venture fund was first line of defense against thousands of business plans that would come in. <laughs> they got mailed in back in the day. Um, and just take the first look at them and make sure that the, the big wigs at the fund got to see the, the real good ideas. Um, and th there are technology startups, so there was some aspect of technology and some aspect of business to it. So that, that worked well for me, that got me in the door. Um, I think I'd, I'd worked at some small companies, uh, that helped as well. When I thought, I, I spent some time at that venture fund, but everybody that was more senior than me had worked in a startup. Um, or a big tech company. Um, and so it was pretty clear to me that if you ever wanted to come back and be a senior person in venture capital, that you needed that experience. And I think there's two reasons for that. One is it makes you a better judge of what's a good idea and what's gonna work. And you might potentially have some better advice for the people you're investing in. Um, but also remembering that you're in a competitive environment, the folks that you're trying to invest in are gonna ask, apart from your money, what good can you do for me? What use would you be on my board? And if you've got some real experience, then you've got a bit more to talk about, um, as opposed to I've just managed money and nothing else. So that, that was my journey. And I think that's, if anything, the, um, the most typical journey. And I think something that, it, and it's quite nice, I see a range of ecosystem leaders here tonight, um, investors, founders, uh, corporate uh, folk, um, and, and many other people interested in the startup realm. Um, Judy, I'd love to know, obviously with Lot 14 and the precinct that we're within right now and you know, Stone and Chalk, Chris over there, if anyone wants to speak to you later, um, tell me with your efforts with, in government right now and the investment in our innovation ecosystem, how critical is this public face um, and, and having this central realm to gather, um, how, how critical is that within our state? It's, it's enormously critical. I think it's, um, it's always a challenge. I think we've heard that there's lots of challenges. It's, it's a challenge to identify who the financial people are, who's going to invest, where are the angel investors. What, what this does is it create, what this does, this physical embodiment, if you like, of what we're trying to do for um, entrepreneurs and startups in South Australia is it creates density so that you have a whole bunch of people doing a whole lot of different things that are all together in the same place. And that density is one way of creating critical mass. It's, you know, we, we, heard, um, we heard Ollie talking about London. You know, London is, as you all know, everybody lives this close together in their daily lives and there's millions of them. So they have critical mass just by the fact that they're all in London. So that density is really, it, it just exists. I mean, I'm not gonna go into the why, you know, the, the structures that are there and the taxation regimes that exist in the UK are very favorable for early stage investors. And, and we heard mention of the EIS and that sort of thing. And that's why you, you get so many, because you can actually, you know, invest your money while you're alive and see the benefit of it other, you know, unlike in some other places. And it's similar in the US. You, there are some taxation advantages, structural advantages in their system that makes it much easier for angel investors to invest de-risks their investment to a certain extent. But, you know, we're fighting constantly here against the challenge of not having 22 million people living in, you know, downtown Adelaide. Um, and this is one way of, of creating that environment without having 22 million people. So I think that's very important. It's about making sure that we have that connected network of individuals and people in the startup ecosystem, entrepreneurs, businesses, customers, investors, government, close by each other so that they can then bump into each other and have those collisions that result in all sorts of interesting things happening. It gives you scale without having to have scale effectively. And just for um, 
the audience's benefit, what are some of the key programs um, like the gov to gov program, um, the RCFS fund, um, what are some of the key initiatives that they might like to go away and do a Google search about after this? Well, as you know, we do have grants. <laughs> we, we, have, we have the Research Commercialisation and Startup Fund, the RCSF, which has a, a number of different avenues into it for funding for ecosystem and related things, but also for directly for startups, um, which is like, and, and we do make you work hard to get that money so that you can be prepared to get money from other people. Um, you know, I think it's worthwhile pointing out that government is investing your money you know you as the taxpayers are it's your money we're investing so we take it very that very seriously we look really hard we're not we're not going to give it give it away easily um, that said government's also a really big business in this state so the go to gov program government as a customer most startups would really much prefer to have paying customers than grants particularly if you're a, a b2c type of customer or a SaaS type customer where you can quickly translate your product into revenue and bootstrap. Obviously, if you're developing a, a, a new drug, that's a little bit more tricky, unless you've got Donald in your <laughs> customer base. <laughs> but, but those are the two big programs that we have currently running. There's a whole bunch of other programs that run um, intermittently during the year. We have a mentoring program. Um, we provided funding through to a couple of the angel groups to get you know, activate angels, we provide funding to South Start, various other things. So there's a whole lot of levers that government's pulling, if you like, to try and build that capability, capacity and density in the system. And David, um, how are some of the ways that people can, can, can get in contact with you uh, via SAVC? I'm trying to provide some tactical takeaways. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Um, hopefully, we're not hard to find. My name's David Rocha. I'm <laughs> back in the room. You find Shane, you'll find Alex. So, you know, if you're in this building, it's not too hard, but I'm, I'm you know, conscious that Lot 14 is not the only place that innovation happens in South Australia. Mm -hmm. So, um, there's a website, www.savcf.com, South Australian Infrastructure Fund.com. That's probably the right starting point. But, you know, Judy knows where we are. Um, if we think that the grants program is a more appropriate place for somebody, We'll, we'll redirect you elsewhere. Um, if we think that you know, a specialised venture fund in your domain somewhere outside of South Australia is the right place to go, we'll, we'll um, also make those introductions. Yeah. Um, we have sort of, there's two missions. Like there's the, I know the treasurer has, has great interest in what we're doing because we make investments and I think there's an expectation that hopefully that's a great investment and that we make money for the state. But the, the Minister for Innovation and Skills is interested in just entrepreneurship succeeding in the state in general, whether or not it's just this fund making money or not. So we, we also serve that mission to just help. And Liana, how can uh, people get in contact with Southern Angels? Uh, well, look up the website <laughs> for Southern Angels. Josh Garrett's uh, sitting over there, our executive yeah. officer. Put your hand up there, Josh. Stand up. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, just, just find us. And uh, uh, Josh has a very, you know, it's quite orchestrated, even though, you know, angels sort of appear to be kind of a dis disorganised lot that come together every so often out of the woodwork. We're actually quite uh, organised. Mm. Um, and there are angel groups interstate as well that uh, syndicate. Um, we're looking more and more to syndicate because um, one of the limitations of angel funding often is that you just haven't got enough money to, to really make a difference for a company. And the last thing a company wants is uh, a series of, you know, a whole series of ants as shareholders who, you know, just increase the numbers, but not the dollars. Uh, and so syndication is one of the things that we do. So that's, mm -hmm. um, uh, I'd also encourage people to look up, uh, particularly Melbourne Angels, very, very well organised, uh, but Sydney and Brisbane as well, um, to uh, look up for them. And uh, we're very happy to work with them. Fantastic. Yeah.